You mentioned Advent. Tell us yes, about that. Yes, it's Advent. Last week was the first, and it was the beginning of hope. And today we walk in peace because we have a hope for the future. And the peace of God, the Bible tells us it surpasses all understanding. And, you know, when peace is there, it doesn't mean that we uh, don't have it situations that we get into. It doesn't mean that bad things haven't come our way. It means that there is a peace in our heart that holds us during the storm. There is a peace that guards our mind. It guards our heart. It, it brings an underlying joy that we know that it's going to be okay. You know, when I was young, we used to sing an old hymn. I don't under, know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know who holds my hand. And when we know who holds our hand, we can celebrate the peace that comes through knowing Jesus, through having him as Lord as our life. So today, if you don't know Jesus, it's your opportunity. Because no matter what comes your way, he will hold you in the storm. He will take you in the good times. He will bless your life and help you. So on this Advent week, as we think about Jesus soon coming as a baby, let's remember that hope is our security, and peace will guide us through. Amen. Even when we're asking God, what should we do with our life? Peace comes. And, and we know that that's uh, the confidence we have that we've heard from God. Starting a new series today, it's called Unexpected. Has anything unexpected happened to you? <laughs> well, guess what? Last January, were you expecting we'd be where we are today? I remember we were looking forward to going to, to Israel, and we, before we left Israel, things were kind of shaking up. We heard whispers about a COVID virus. Around. How many heard that? Did you hear those rum, rumors and rumblings in January? And then as February came about, we saw uh, it start to roll out a little bit more intensely. And we went to uh, Israel, and I had booked tickets all ready to India, was going over there, so looking forward to it, had it all set up. We'd heard mm, even more things going on. Sometimes we hear hints, right? We hear little whispers of what's coming, but we don't expect it to really come and impact us, right? Yes. Well, guess what? Here we are. Now we heard in the spring, we were shut down for a while, and we heard, okay, it's going to get better. We all believed it's going to get better. It got better, right? But we heard there's going to be a second wave and it's going to be worse than the first. And even though we heard it, did we believe that's what was going to happen? Absolutely not. We believe that, yeah, it would affect some places, but it would not affect us greatly. Guess what? Here we are, right in the middle of things now, and God is here to help us in the midst of it. So unexpected things come, even when we've heard about it in the past, it's still unexpected to us when it actually arrives. Well, guess what? It's the same in the Bible and the same with things of God. I want to read a verse to you out of an Old Testament prophet. We're going to look at a few prophets here today. His name was Amos, okay? And so Amos chapter 3, verse 7 says this. Indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything, right? Never does anything unless he reveals his plan to his servants, the prophets. Well, that was between seven and 800 years before Jesus came on the scene. And guess what? He spoke to a number of prophets during that day, Amos and Isaiah and Micah and Hosea. If you read the Bible, you know all those names. And although much of what they said was there, it was out there for hundreds of years. Guess what? People didn't expect it to actually be fulfilled in their day. But guess what? The unexpected Savior was coming. He was coming. He was coming. And if you turn to Isaiah 7, 14, all right then, the Lord himself will give you the sign. The virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. In the book of Micah, Micah heard specifics from God that a Savior would come. In Micah 5, But you, O Bethlehem, are only a small village among all the people of Judah, yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins are in the distant past, 
will come from you. Nobody expected anything good to come out of Bethlehem. You know, when we were in Israel in February and we were on the hill looking down to this little village of Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem's grown a bit. It's kind of spread out almost into the edge of Jerusalem. But as we were standing there, I was thinking of the scripture and thinking, you know, we look at houses, we look at different areas, and we make assumptions about those things. Sometimes we look at people and we make assumptions, even though we may have some prior knowledge. But that doesn't mean that's what it is because God's word tells us everything is subject to change. And God had already proclaimed what was going to happen, but nobody was paying attention. That's just little Bethlehem. Nothing good comes from Bethlehem. But the unexpected came from Bethlehem. God told Hosea information. You know, throughout the Old Testament, we see one book after another where God spoke to his people, where he spoke to his prophets, and he proclaimed what was to come as they listened. But many around did not listen, even though they knew that the prophet was declaring the word. Hosea 11.1 1 says, when Israel was a child, I loved him, and I called him my son out of Egypt. You see, God's plan didn't just happen because things weren't going along the way he thought they should. God's plan was from the beginning of time. God's plan was always to rescue his people. God's plan was always a greater love that would come and unexpectedly interrupt your life and come at a time where you need him the most. And so as we walk into this Christmas season, there are many unexpecteds coming. But the greatest unexpected that will come is as you step Jesus, as Jesus comes and brings a message of hope and peace and love to our lives. You know, how, how, could, how could God bring a child from a virgin? Was that unexpected? <laughs> Absolutely unexpected. You know, when I, I consider this, I, I, I was reading in Luke chapter 1. Why don't you get your Bible out Sam and Linda, get your Bible. I know you've read this before, but Luke chapter 1, go there. We're going to start right at the beginning. Well, let's start at 26. Wang, you can get yours as well. It says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, who was a descendant of King David. Now, now even this was prophetic that it was spoken that the Savior would come through David's line. Very interesting. They'd already been warned hundreds of years ahead of time. <laughs> and then in verse 20, uh, 26, 28, it says, Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could possibly mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you've found favor with God. Isn't that powerful? Uh, a teenage girl had found favor with God. How do you get favor with God? Well, you end up spending time with God. You commit yourself to him. You listen to what he, he, what he speaks to you. You anticipate that he is speaking to you even when it's things you don't want to hear. Can you imagine what it must have been like when an angel came? Wow. Let's go down to verse 31. I want to read a little further. He tells her, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you'll name him Jesus. He'll be very great and be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Wow, if God sent an angel to speak to you and tell you something like that, what would you think? It's, it's crazy what God wants to do in people's lives. Now look at Mary's response. She said, but, but how can this happen? I'm a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he'll be called the Son of God. Imagine, unexpectedly, a teenage girl engaged named Mary became pregnant. 
Now, this was unexpected to her family. Can you imagine how her family responded? They didn't remember all the prophecies, okay? And what about the neighbors? How, how did the neighbors think about this? How, how did they interact with her? Well, we don't hear the whole story, but our imagination can especially go there. Her fiance heard about it. He, she told him, guess what he thought? Guys out there, how would you feel if, uh, if your fiance was suddenly pregnant? Would, you get, would that get your attention? Well, it got, it got Joseph's attention as well. And he thought, okay, then I'm going to, uh, I need to quietly, because I love her, respectfully, because I care for her, set aside and go on with my life because she's obviously done something she shouldn't. And in a, in a dream, God came to him in the night and revealed an angel. The angel spoke to him and said, it's not what you think. It's actually God that got her pregnant. The Holy Spirit came upon her. You need to continue with your plan to marry this woman. She is holy. Wow. I mean, would that get, was that expected? No, Joseph didn't expect that either. Lots of unexpected things happen, but they brought about the will of Almighty God. And each one of them took submission to God's will to bring it all about. I love, uh, I love what it says in, in Luke chapter 2. Get, get your Bible, Wang, and let, let's go on to, to chapter 2 now. Let me read the first uh, 17 verses. I know it's a lot, but you can handle it today. He's going to help us as we, as we look into this. It says, at the time, the Roman Empire Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the whole Roman Empire. And it's the first census that was taken when uh, Quirinius was the governor in Syria. And, and they all returned, each person had to return to their ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who, who is now expecting a child. Doesn't say great with child, but that's what it means, okay? And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth, laid him in a manger, kind of like this one back here, because there was no lodging for them. That night, there were shepherds staying in a field nearby, guarding their sheep. Listen to this. Unexpectedly, suddenly, the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the, the radiance of God's glory, the Lord's glory, surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Would you be a little excited if angels appeared to you? You're out on, you're out on a parking lot. <laughs> Instead of our, we don't have sheep that we're taking care of, but we're out, out on the parking lot getting to our car and all of a sudden an angel shows up. <laughs> and then he brings a message. He says, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you'll recognize him by this sign. You'll find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in the major. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of angels, uh, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven, peace on earth to those to whom God is pleased. Now, have you imagined this? Was this unexpected out with those shepherds? They're there minding their own business, minding their sheep. It's nighttime. And all of a sudden, one angel shows up, starts to speak to them. If that's not enough, unexpectedly, a whole crew, a whole army of bright angels show up. And they're there singing. I'm telling you, man, unexpected things happen to bring about the will of God. When the angels had returned to heaven, Listen to this. The shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us. So they hurried to the village, and they found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. Verse 17. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone. What did they tell them? They told everyone what had happened and what the child had said and what the angel had said to them about this child. How do you think Mary felt about this? Wow. 
Well, now, you've made quite a grand entrance into this world, now haven't you? I suppose you'd like to know how this all came to be. Well, on an ordinary day, more ordinary than you can imagine, an angel came to me. I know, right? I had trouble believing myself. He spoke of things I really couldn't comprehend. He spoke of you, the son of the Most High. And after he told me all that would happen, events that felt altogether impossible, he looked straight at me as if to ask, will you say yes? This is not exactly the entrance a king would make, if I do say so myself. A manger of all places. No palace, no guard. And what am I to make of all these visitors? This silent night sure got loud fast. Can I tell you a secret? It was the scariest yes I'd ever uttered. This was an impossible yes that only God could make possible. This would change everything. Never in my wildest dreams. How can this be? This child that I see here in my arms asleep peacefully God's only son the promise the one the angel made known to me the Yes, required of me. Oh, my beautiful child, I can't begin to imagine the yeses that God will ask of you. The future of man in your little hands, you Save the lost. In a moment of time, the unexpected changed everything. It brought salvation to those that would freely accept. The Bible said, whosoever will can come. It's not about your status. It's not about the country you're from. It's not about your education. It's about your willingness to give your heart to him and let him move inside of you. Jesus is still looking for those. And he wants you and I that know him to be the ones to tell the good message of hope that an unexpected Savior came and changed everything. In a moment of time, everything changed. But you know, the Holy Spirit came 
In the last few months, we've been looking at the Holy Spirit and how he's moving in our lives. And I believe that's one of the keys in Mary's life. As she responded to the Spirit of God and not looked at the natural things. See, the natural things of this world will pull you. They will try to tie you in. And sometimes they're good things. They're things that seem really good. But they pull us in away from God's very best for us. And God wants us to listen to his voice and walk in his steps. You know, the Bible tells us that we find him in his still small voice. It's not in the big winds. It's not in the big hurrahs. It's not in the big events. But it's in a still, small voice speaking to our heart underneath everything. I'm sure Mary found herself in that place where the situation of life was overwhelming her. But that still, small voice deep inside her brought peace. It brought a hope for the future. And that hope came by the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. And he came to help each and every one of us. He wants to bring that inner peace to your life. He wants you to know that you can rest on that peace and it's going to be okay. He wants you to know that it may not look the way you think it should look right now. But as you hold on to that peace inside, he will bring about his divine will for you. So as we walk into this Christmas season, As the unexpected Savior changed everything, listen to his voice. Respond by your heart and see what he'll do for you. (laughs) Unexpected. Do you expect the unexpected? Well, I guess we can, can't we? We can look for unexpected things from God. I want to challenge you to look for the unexpected things of God in your life. Yeah, Pastor Finley and family over in India, even in India, look for the unexpected things to come your way. Expect God to get involved. Expect him to speak to you. Expect the clarity of vision to come in the mighty name of Jesus. See, you can expect God to break into your world when you at least expect it. (laughs) Doesn't that make, that doesn't make sense to my head. But guess what? God is not about what we think. He is greater. He goes beyond what we anticipate in our lives. And he's already chosen you, friend, for his purposes. He's chosen you to live a life that pleases him every single day. So never expect that things are going to stay the same. Expect the unexpected. Expect God to show you things that you haven't noticed before. When when you're looking around, the city of Brampton right now. Expect those red signs with nice white letters on them. Expect to see Christmas is about who? About Christ, right? Christmas is about the anointed one, the one chosen by Almighty God. It's not about the guy with the jolly belly, okay? It's not about that. That's not what Christmas is all about. Christmas is about Jesus the Christ. Expect to see that. Drive downtown in Brampton. Look at City Hall. Expect to see the um, flags there. And guess what? You're going to see the Christian flag flying over City Hall in Brampton. Because we believe that Brampton is called by God with a destiny on it. Hallelujah. It was began with strong believers in Jesus Christ that came here before the middle of, before 1850, they came in. And they came here and settled in this area. They, They homesteaded in this area. They raised up meeting house for God in this area right downtown. And then guess what? They named Brampton because that's where they came from in England was Brampton. And there were strong believers, strong followers of Jesus. So they set a pace for us that now we look around, we don't see the same thing, but expect the unexpected. Because 
Jesus is Lord over Brampton. Jesus is Lord over our area. Jesus is Lord over our community. And we boldly declare that. So expect to see it. Expect to see, my friends. People have those type of uh, voices speak in their ear about Jesus. Expect just like happened to Joseph. Expect dreams to come where angels will speak in a dream and reveal Jesus, reveal his plan to you. Expect that, my friends. It's happening all over the world right now. It really is. We're living in a day when angels themselves are ministering to people. They're waking them up in the night. Jesus is appearing in dreams. I hear of this often, especially in nations where the gospel of Jesus is not raised up as high as it is in our nation of Canada, where there's not a full freedom to preach the, the forgiveness of sin in the name of Jesus. Guess what? Angels are coming and visiting people in their homes. Dreams are coming into the lives of men and women, young and old, revealing the life of Jesus Christ. This is the day we're living in. Expect the unexpected. Tell, tell, tell the one sitting next to you, expect the unexpected. Go ahead, tell them. Why, am, why is this important? Because when we don't expect God to break into our life unexpectedly, we get into routines that we just kind of walk through and walk through and walk through and think that today and tomorrow are going to be the same and the next day is going to be the same. And so, so we just live our life for today instead of expecting what God had said. He said that he's calling all men to himself. In fact, you read that verse in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. So guess what? If you have not already surrendered your life to Jesus, from God's perspective, you're lost. You may know where you live. You may know what you believe. But from God's perspective, you are lost. You are separated from him. And guess what? The unexpected is going to come. We never expect the day we're going to die, do we? We, never we, we don't think it's going to be now. You may be young or you may be a little older like I am. We don't expect that today is going to be the day that we die. But we have to expect the unexpected and be prepared for unexpected things to come in our life. Not just death, but expect that God wants to minister life to us. So I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you to do this. If you're a follower of Jesus, start to pray for those around you. Start to expect that God is going to break into their lives. You may remember, there was a man named Saul who was a persecutor of the church. He pulled families apart, brought them to be tried and put in jail. And yet, God broke in unexpectedly into his life, right in the middle of going to persecute people. <laughs> and turned his life totally around. Expect that for your family. Expect that for those you've already been praying for. So, so church, let's pray for those around us. Let's pray for God's unexpected intervention in lives to come about. Expect healing to come, even though the doctors have said other things. Expect intervention from God. Maybe you're one of those ones like I used to be where I didn't know about Jesus. Expect God to reveal Jesus to you as a person, as one who actually loves you because he does. Expect this, my friends. Pray. Others are praying for you. Expect that God loves you enough to break into your life and to turn it around. In fact, today is called the day of salvation. <laughs> wow, isn't that what the Bible says? Today is the day of salvation. It's not just about the future. Many want to put it off, but I want to challenge you. Would you pray with me right now? Let's just lift our hands. It's an act of surrender. Would you surrender to God today? Just look right at me. It's all right. You don't have to close your eyes. It's okay. And let's just pray. And Just pray this with me. Would you pray? See, Mary prayed a prayer of surrender. She said, let it be to me as, as you desire. God has a desire for your life to bring you peace inside, 
hope inside. You've heard about it. And all you need to do is receive it. Let's pray together. Say, Heavenly Father. Just say it right out loud. Heavenly Father, I surrender my life to you. And Jesus, I open my heart for you to come and change me. Tell him, change me from the inside out. I will live for you, Jesus. You died for me so that I can live. And I will live for you. And tell others about your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for changing my life. Amen. Say that word, amen. What is amen? Amen means so be it. Yes, it is done. My friend, it is done. Thank you so much for being with us today. I trust that the Word of God impacted your heart just the way it did mine. Remember, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can do that right now. And then tell a friend so they can join us and be online with us each week. If you'd like to help us be able to continue this ministry around the world, you can do so by clicking the link below. And I believe God's going to bless you as you bless many others. Have a great week. God bless you.